Hello everybody, so I have brewed another New England IPA and uh, yeah it's looking alright in the glass there if I do say so myself um, colours probably a little bit better on the camera I think than it is in real life but anyway it's not just any New England IPA it's a Quake New England IPA so I brewed it with this Beyond Quake Yeast which I believe is the Hornadal strain so uh, if you want to find out how I went about doing that and uh, how the beer turned out because I'm not going to taste it right now you'll have to wait till the end stay tuned So if you haven't heard about these new, uh, well they're not new, they're actually really old, uh, but kind of new on the uh, UK home brewing scene anyway, Norwegian yeast, or Kwaik yeast, um, some people call them Kvaik, Kvaik, Kwaik, Kwaik, um, I'm going with Kwaik, because I heard somebody saying that who was Norwegian on a on a Milk the Funk link or something, anyway, um, I have had a little play around with these yeast before. Uh, courtesy of um, some Fram Garden that John Anderson sent me so there's a link or there will be a link hopefully up the top there to that video um, but I haven't really done much more of them since um, and then I saw these yeast up on um, the homebrew company's website uh, so they're from the Wicklow Hops Company uh, they've kind of rebranded them with their own names but based on the description and what I've read on uh, again uh, the wikis about these uh, yeast and stuff, I'm almost certain that this one is the Hornadol strain because the descriptors for it are very specific and match exactly to that one. So pretty sure that's what it is and based on the description being all kind of tropical fruit and pineapple and various other things it seemed like an ideal fit for a New England IPA so I thought I'd give it a go in that because these yeast seem to be all the rage at the moment for the big fruity hoppy beers um, people are loving them because they're turning beers around really quickly and so on if you've not heard of them yet then uh, where have you been it's all the rage <laughs> jump on the bandwagon guys come on um, but yeah so seemed like a natural fit for a New England IPA thought I'd give it a go and also to try and see whether I could kind of turn one around a bit more quickly uh, than I normally would because they work so much faster so this one is recommended to be used between 30 and 35 degrees so pretty warm um, high flocculation pretty good attenuation between 70 and 82 uh, percent recommended for higher gravity warts so again for a slightly stronger uh, beer like a new england ipa if you're brewing it on the the high side of the gravity that should work quite well um, and under pitch so it's a fairly small vial which means that you're kind of doing that anyway if you're using this amount um, yeah so that's what it is that's what i decided to make Let's have a quick look at the recipe. Um, so it was very much inspired by the Timmy Jenkins School of New England IPA making. Resulted in a recipe like this, which is 260, sorry, 2.6 kilos of Maris Otter, 2.4 kilos of Pilsner malt. So I thought I'd split the um, base malt between the two just to lighten it up a little bit. Uh, 500 grams of oats, 500 grams of wheat malt, 200 grams of Kerrygold crystal malt, 200 grams of honey malt, and that's it for the malt bill. Um, apart from half a kilo of maltodextrin, which was going into the boil um, towards the end, so last sort of five ten minutes of the boil. Then hopping wise, nothing in the boil at all, all whirlpool and dry hops. So we had uh, amarillo. Citra and Equinox hops 50 grams of each well pulled at 80 degrees for 20 minutes which should have given us uh, all of the um, assumed bitterness or uh, calculated bitterness from Beer Smith which worked out 24.7 IBUs and then the dry hop 100 grams each of Citra and Equinox and 50 grams of Amarillo so that's why I called it the Ace Kauai New England IPA because it's an Amarillo Citra and Equinox and uh, vital statistics for that so 23 litre batch size tend to brew 
the New England IPAs to a higher batch size than usual because of all the losses you get from the hops. Um, so 23 litres. The target gravity was 1070. Um, estimated final gravity 1018, which should have given me 6.9%. Uh, and as I said, 24.7 IBUs. Uh, in the end, I did miss the uh, gravity by a little bit, so it came out quite a bit short. That ended up at 10.64. Did still finish at 10.18, though, so it worked out at 6.1% in the end, so a bit under the target. Not sure why that was. I um, think possibly some of the beers that I've been using this particular Pilsner malt in, the, gra um, the efficiency has dropped a little bit, so it might be that malt that's causing that, but no big deal. Still within the sort of range of strength and OG that I was after so reasonably happy with that. The only other thing to mention, water treatment. Um, as per my previous New England IPA I went for a fairly high level of calcium chloride um, so starting off with RO water added um, in total about 6.6 .6 grams of calcium chloride and about 2.6 grams of gypsum and that was it. So that gave me a water profile which came out as 75 ppm calcium, uh, 99 ppm chloride and 46 of sulphate with nothing else in there which hopefully will work quite well um, the higher chloride to sulphate ratio is supposed to give you better mouthfeel and um, soften the bitterness from the hops and so on um, not something I want to go into too much at this point but I think I talked about that a bit in the previous New England IPA video. Anyway, that's the recipe. Um, let's do some brew footage. Okay, so let's get to the important part, which is obviously tasting the finished product. As I showed you before, colour-wise, uh, it's 
pretty good. It's definitely got the haze factor. It's completely opaque. Um, it does probably look a little bit brighter colour-wise on the camera than it does in real life. Um, it's a little bit anemic, the colour um, in the flesh, than what I wanted. So still not quite nailed that really bright yellow kind of golden colour that um, some people seem to get with these. But it's definitely got that kind of orange juice look to it that a lot of people are um, you know, really keen on for, for this style of beer. Uh, nice frothy cap on it and so on. Now one thing I do need to say about this is it's actually been in the keg for um, a few weeks now so it's about three weeks and a bit in the keg which is definitely a lot longer than I would normally um, be sort of tasting doing the taste test on the New England IPA for um, but to be honest when it was first out of the keg I was not that keen on it in fact I was at the point when I first tried it that I thought this might end up um, being one that I just bin off because I can't be bothered to try and soldier my way through a whole keg of it. Now, the reason for that, the initial um, flavours that I was getting from this when I kegged it, and I did keg it quite early, remember, so it was, um, I think, only about uh, nine days after, uh, yeah, nine days of fermentation it went into the keg. Um, there was a lot of green kind of hop bitterness on the aftertaste, so it was a very uh, grassy kind of green um, twang to the flavour at the end. There is a still a little bit of a um, herbal kind of green note to this, but it's faded loads since that first taster. Um, it also had a little bit of a um, kind of hot alcohol taste to it as well, so there was a little bit of that um, just slightly boozy taste to it which I wasn't keen on either so um, grassiness is a flavour in beers that I really don't get on with if um, you know my IPAs or pale ales have that really green grassy bitterness to them um, I hate it basically so I, you know it wasn't the worst that I've ever had <laughs> in, in this beer at all um, but it was enough for me to sort of go that's a bit you know that's not right uh, I don't really want to be drinking this so I put it aside for a bit and for hopefully it will come good it is very young still and uh, yeah it did basically so that has those kind of flavors have softened massively there's still a little bit of those there but uh, it's much better now and it's much closer to what I had in mind in terms of a New England IPA flavor profile so let's um, actually see what it's smelling and tasting like now um, so on the nose it isn't massively pungent certainly for the amount of hops that have gone into it um, it's just got that kind of sweet juicy very ripe kind of tropical fruit aroma to it um, there's a little bit of that kind of sweet kind of honeydew melon thing there with some citrus yeah kind of sweet orange maybe a little bit of stone fruit but it's not yeah it's not blow your head off kind of um, pungent it just smells like a nice juicy fruity um, New England IPA I suppose so let's taste it so again soft fruitiness is definitely there mouthfeel is really good so I think that's spot on for the, the type of uh, the beer and um, what I was aiming for with this particular brew uh, that maltodextrin seems to have done the trick in terms of giving that really thick, almost creamy body to it. Um, so again, going back to the uh, the person who kind of influenced this recipe a lot, it's got that real thick uh, body and mouthfeel to it that a lot of Timmy's beers have that he sent to me, which is really good and works well for this kind of big hazy um, New England IPA style. The flavour is again not as punchy in terms of the fruitiness as I might have hoped with the amount of hops that went into it it's really difficult to say what the yeast is bringing to the party here because in hindsight making the first beer that I've ever done with that yeast a New England IPA doesn't really give me any room to pick apart what is uh, coming from the yeast and what is coming from the hops so bit difficult to say um, what the yeast is bringing to it but there is a kind of sort of herbal I wouldn't say funky but 
just something slightly different with this that I wouldn't have expected just from the, the hopping um, that was in there. I know Equinox can have a little bit of a green kind of herbal f note to it sometimes, but I think there's a little bit of that is coming from the yeast as well. Um, possibly the hops, uh, that kind of green hop flavour that I was talking about that was initially there, it's a bit of a leftover of that as well. But the bitterness is still really low, very drinkable. Um, it's not quite there though, it's not quite where where I want it to be, the, the hops are not as bright um, as I was hoping, the aroma is not quite as pungent as I wanted, uh, it's alright, it's good, like I'd be happy with this if I um, was, I guess if I was paying money for this in a bar I would be like, yeah it's an okay New England IPA, not bad, but in terms of the yeast choice and how it's worked for this particular beer, to be honest, I'm not convinced. I think maybe um, sticking with some of the yeasts that are, you know, specifically uh, used for New England styles like the, uh, you know, your Vermont's London Ale Free, um, some of the Imperial ones like Juice and Citrus and uh, the combination of those two, which is the dry hop one that Timmy likes, I think. Um, maybe uh, London Fog's another one, maybe those are you know, possibly better choices to go for where you're not looking for the really quick turnaround. For me, to be honest, the you know brewing at a high temperature is, I guess is useful if you've, uh, you've not got access to um, temperature control in the summer, but for me I've got a brew fridge so that's not an issue, um, so the advantages of that are kind of irrelevant for me. The quick turnaround, yeah that's handy but I'm not usually in that much of a rush to get the beers into the keg and for this one like to be honest I had to age it for a bit to actually get the flavour I wanted it anyway so it ended up being the same sort of time span that I would have with a normal beer. Now this is just for this particular beer I'm going to use this yeast again and try it in different styles and see if it works well but um, yeah although it is sold as something that's going to give you big tropical fruit flavours and everything and that sounds like a natural fit for the style I'm not convinced that I would do this beer again. I would probably try this recipe again but definitely use maybe a different yeast in it and see if that improved it. That's about it really. I think for, for me it's kind of a uh, yeah decent beer. I'm enjoying it. I will still drink drink this and uh, be happy to share it with others but um, I think I can do better. I think the previous New England IPA that I put the link up for was a bit better than this one. Um, yeah don't want to blame it all on the yeast because it's literally my first go of it but like I said, I think that I would um, prefer to try this with, um, you know, juice or I've got a load of London fog that people have sent me. Um, I'm going to build up for a starter for something soon. Maybe use that in it instead. Yeah, one of the things that I did do with this beer that maybe contributed to that, some of the issues in terms of the hopping, um, when it was uh, time to dry hop, the beer was still very warm from the fermentation. Uh, I didn't do a like a double dry hop or anything like that, I just put it all in one go, but it was still up around 25, 26 degrees I think. Uh, I know a lot of people advocate dry hopping at cooler temperatures, so perhaps that maybe contributed to some of that slight heart, slightly harsh hop flavour that came through initially. Um, it may just be a lot of the hot particulate was dropping to the bottom of the keg. I don't know, maybe some the way the yeast interacts with the hops has contributed to it a little bit. Um, but that would maybe be something else that I'd change as well if I did do it again was to drop the temperature more before the before the dry hopping. Anyway, I think I'm rambling on a bit, so I will leave it there. But um, yeah, cheers. Hopefully, uh, if you do decide to use Kavaik for Kawaik, Kavaik, I'm changing the way I say it now, for your beers uh, or New England IPAs, it comes out well. Definitely interesting yeast to use. Um, so give them a go. Cheers. I'm the dude, so that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino.